All right, folks, good evening. Uh, welcome to something a little different tonight. I know some of y'all maybe were counting on T's math tonight, but there's so many people in this group that are passing the T's. I'm seeing a lot of acceptance letters and med dosage is coming up. And and my, the main thing I want you to know here is that, yes, I, I do stuff <laughs> besides T's math. Um, I am a college math instructor and I definitely do work with a lot of students after the T's test when they get into nursing school and they're taking med dosage and I wanted to give you all a little taste of that tonight so again not tease related but the technique that I really use a lot in med dosage is a technique that you can actually use on the math portion of the tease and that is dimensional analysis now I'm gonna go ahead and give my little disclaimer there are ways of doing med dosage without dimensional analysis. There's a lot of formulas that you would have to learn and memorize. Well, dimensional analysis kind of kicks all of that out the window. You still need to know your conversions, uh, common conversions, we'll talk about those tonight, milligrams to grams or micrograms to milligrams, things like that, teaspoons, milliliters. Those are some conversions, those are not formulas. I'm going to split this live session up into two sessions because um, I, I think it's going to take a while and I don't want to overwhelm you too much first. If you have not passed the T's, then I mean, you can still hang out by all means because this technique you can use on the math portion of the T's test. So tonight, well, the main topics you're going to run across, there are other topics and I will get feedback from you all. But tonight we're going to cover one through five. Um, and in my opinion, it's... Right, number five is the tough one when you're doing medications based on a patient's weight, a child's weight, or an adult's weight. And you can do some of these things without dimensional analysis, and I, I will show you that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I mean, the main thing I'm going to focus on with you first is dealing with tablets, and sometimes it's just as simple as dividing. So uh, let me go ahead and jump into number one and number two, and we're going to see some common lingo that you're going to see in nursing school as well. So number one, a patient has been prescribed, and whenever I see a drug name, I just say prescribe some medicine because you don't want to hear me try to pronounce these. But a patient has been prescribed some medicine, and it's 0.5 milligrams, and common lingo for nursing, this stands for orally or by mouth. So 0.5 milligrams by mouth every day, and it says the pharmacy supplies 0.25 milligram tablets. How many tablets would the nurse administer per dose? Now, some of these you can do super quick. So the quick way, before I jump into dimensional analysis, let's take what the patient needs Let's take the 0.5 milligrams. So this is what the patient needs. The patient needs 0.5 milligrams, and the tablets come. What do they have on hand, so to speak? Uh, 0.25 milligrams, we're going to divide by that. And for med dosage, uh, you will have a calculator. Um, I have not heard any students say that the instructor did not let them use a calculator. But our answer here is going to be two tablets. Because if you think about it, if we had a single tablet that was 0.25 milligrams, and that's what it says. Each tablet is 0.25 milligrams. So we got this tablet, and then we have another tablet that is 0.25 milligrams. If you add those together, you will get the 0.5 milligrams. Now, let me show you dimensional analysis. And this is the way I now teach it. I teach it different than how I did a few years ago. Um, it's pretty much the same technique though. Look at your question. Look at your question. The question says, how many tablets? Now, you're going to look at dimensional analysis first here and think, man, this is a lot longer. But trust me, as things get more difficult, dimensional analysis is going to be your best friend. So the question says, how many tablets? Well, what do we know? What do we know about tablets in this problem? That first sentence doesn't tell us anything about tablets. However, the second sentence does. It says the pharmacy supplies 0.25 milligram tablets. So I'm going to start my dimensional analysis with tablets because that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find tablets. So the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to literally write one tablet and I'm going to put that over 
0.25 milligrams. Now, why did I do this? That's what this says in blue, 0.25 milligram tablets. That means one tablet is 0.25 milligrams. And the reason I wrote the tablet at the top is because that's what we're trying to find. I'm going to say that over and over and over tonight. And then with dimensional analysis, you want to cancel out words. You want to get rid of words. So since we want tablets, I want to get rid of this word milligrams. And the way we do that with dimensional analysis is we multiply. So I'm going to multiply. Well, if I want to get rid of milligrams, what else do we know about milligrams in this problem? Well, the patient needs 0.5 milligrams. I'm going to put this at the top. And I'm just going to put this over one, which technically stands for one dose. Now, why did I put milligrams at the top here? When you have a word at the bottom and a word at the top, we can cancel out those words. So look at the words that we have left. It says, okay, the word we have up top is tablet. The word we have at the bottom is dose. And that's exactly what we're trying to find. Because it says how many tablets per dose. And that's what we have here, tablets per dose. Now, I know you're thinking, man, this is longer. I don't want to do it this way. That's why I showed you the quick way, but trust me, when I say later on, they're going to get tougher and dimensional analysis is going to be your best friend. It's all about canceling out words. So now let's go ahead and multiply. Multiply your top numbers, 1 times 0.5. I'll show you a shortcut with this in a minute, but that's just going to be 0.5. And then if we take 0.25 times 1, we get 0.25. And what I want y'all to notice, okay, what words do we have left? We have tablets per dose. That's the word at the top and the word at the bottom. And look, look at what we got here, 0.5 divided by 0.25. There is that same quick way I showed you earlier. And we've already divided that. We said that's going to be two tablets per dose. Now, that one's not too bad. So let's just recap. Look at the question. Look at what you're trying to find. We're trying to find how many tablets. So I'm going to start off my first fraction with the word tablet. And I got this information in blue from the problem. Now, sometimes you may need a little bit more work than this. And that's where you're going to have to use conversions. And that's what I want to show you in number two. So let's go ahead and look at number two. A doctor prescribes a drug it's 0.6 milligrams, remember this right here, PO by mouth, orally, 0.6 milligrams, and Q8H, that means every eight hours. Whatever number you see in between the Q and the H is gonna be the number of hours. So Q8H is every eight hours. I'll come back and talk about that in a minute. The pharmacy dispenses 300 microgram tablets. Ooh, so over here, the prescription is for milligrams. However, the pharmacy dispenses the tablets in micrograms. This is where you got to be careful. Look at our question. How many tablets would the nurse administer per dose? And I, we got two questions here, and I just need to put a question mark down here for that one. But the first question, how many tablets would the nurse administer per dose? Well, let's go ahead. Don't do any conversions yet. That's where you can kind of, we don't want to get sidetracked. Again, my, my goal tonight is to get you to like dimensional analysis or like it even more if, you, if you've already had some practice with it. So how many tablets? We're trying to find tablets again. What do we know about tablets in our problem? Well, it says right here, the pharmacy dispenses 300 microgram tablets. Something kind of similar to what I did up here. Since we're trying to find tablets, I'm going to put tablets up top. And I'm just going to abbreviate that. I'm going to say one tab. Nothing wrong with that. One tab is going to be over 300 micrograms because that's what we are given in the problem. Now, earlier when I had milligrams at the bottom, I could immediately get rid of those milligrams because we had it given to us in our problem. We don't have micrograms given to us in a problem. 
which brings me to one of my first things um, where, you know, you might say, well, where do I go? You need to use a conversion. So I'm going to do a conversion here in green. And this is one, if you don't know it, you're going to know it soon enough. But a conversion is going to be 1,000 micrograms is equal to one milligram. 1,000 micrograms is always going to be one milligram. Now, which one of these do we want to put at the top of this fraction? We're trying to cancel out words. Since I have micrograms at the bottom, I want to put this microgram at the top. So 1,000 micrograms, I'm going to put the one milligram at the bottom. Now you might say, why did I even use this conversion? Why did I even use that? Well, one, I needed to get rid of micrograms. And two, I needed to bring in a word that I do have in my problem. That's why I use that conversion. Again, two reasons. One, to get rid of a word. And the second reason, to try to get a word to match up in my problem, which we do have now. So we've gotten rid of micrograms. Now we need to get rid of this word milligram. And lucky for us, we know what the patient needs. The patient needs 0.6 milligrams by mouth every eight hours. So for now, I'm just going to say 0.6 milligrams. And I'm still just going to put this over one dose. Even though the patient's going to be getting this every eight hours, we can still just put that over one dose. All right, now let's cancel out the word milligrams. And let me go ahead and start hitting on some ways that we can do this multiplying and dividing faster. Multiply all of your top numbers, and you can always skip ones. I don't care if the ones are at the top or the ones are at the bottom. You can skip those numbers because multiplying by one and dividing by one don't change a daggone thing. So I'm going to multiply my other top numbers. 1,000 times 0.6. Now, I don't care what it's equal to. 600, I don't care. Here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And you're going to hear me say this over and over and over tonight. Go ahead and immediately start dividing by whatever numbers you have at the bottom. Don't waste time and write it down. No need to. Immediately start dividing by your numbers at the bottom. And in this case, the only number we have to divide by is 300. Because again, we don't have to worry about these ones. So just dividing by 300. And we get two, <laughs> ironically, the same answer we got earlier. So this is going to be two tablets per dose. Now, this is the answer to the first question. And we do have two questions. So sometimes you will see that. How many tablets would the nurse administer per dose? Two tabs per dose. But we have another question. It says, how many tablets would the nurse administer per day? Now, I did not, you know, I mentioned every eight hours. Well, here's what I want y'all to think about. And, and, and I'm not going to do dimensional analysis here because you'll do this so many times, you'll be like, okay, yeah, I know to multiply by three. Because technically, that is what every eight hours means. Think about this. Every eight hours, eight hours, another eight hours, and yet another eight hours is a total of 24 hours, which makes up a whole day. There are 24 hours in a day. So what I want you to realize here, the shortcut to get this blue one, we don't have to do dimensional analysis. If a patient's getting a medication every eight hours, that's always going to be three times per day. So let's think about how we can use what we've already found two tablets per dose, the patient's going to get three doses per day. So all you really do is just take the two tabs. The patient's going to get it three times a day. That's going to be six tabs per day. And we could use dimensional analysis there, but I mean, no need to. As long as you can remember every eight hours, if you need to find out how much a patient's getting per day, every eight hours, you will always multiply by three because there's three eights in 24. And we're going to see some more time problems right here in a few minutes as well. But I want to throw out some of that lingo. So we've looked at PO by mouth. We've seen Q with some number H. That means every eight hours in this case. 
And these are just two examples dealing with uh, tablets. And in all honesty, some of y'all might not be sold on dimensional analysis yet, but I like it. I like dimensional analysis. It's one technique that you have to learn and you can get, I'm not lying when I say this, you can pretty much get through your whole med dosage class by using dimensional analysis. No need to memorize a formula for this one and then a different formula for this one and a different formula for this one. Save that brain power for memorizing your conversions. You do need to memorize your conversions. So those are two examples of uh, tablets, capsules, and something I didn't mention, maybe y'all did read this, the testing requirements, just about every student that I have worked with who passed the T's, they took med dosage, and we kept in touch, um, we still did some tutoring or what have you, their test, um, one student, for example, she had to do 10 questions, she had to get all 10 right. And if she didn't, I think she maybe got one more 10. Um, there are some schools where maybe they give you 20 questions and you can get one or two wrong. But for pretty much everybody I've heard from, the testing requirements are often very strict, meaning you can only you, you might not be able to miss any or maybe you can miss one or two. So I know that sounds stressful um, and I know it's math and I know some of us don't like math, but that's why I'm here too. So keep that in mind. And now let's jump into the second topic. Oral liquids, and this is where your milliliters. So when we talked about tablets and capsules, we were talking about milligrams um, or micrograms. That's like your Tylenol pills and all that junk. Well, now we got oral medications. So that's your liquid. This is where you're dealing with milliliters, maybe teaspoons, tablespoons, ounces, fluid ounces, stuff like that. And that's going to be these next two problems right here. So number three... A patient has been prescribed amoxicillin, 0.75 grams, orally, and now we have this other lingo junk flying around. QID. QID means four times per day. And when I write that little X, I'm just literally saying four times per day. The patient's going to get 0.75 grams of amoxicillin four times a day. Now, look at how this amoxicillin is supplied. The pharmacy supplies amoxicillin on hand. That's what they have on hand. That's what they have available at 125 milligrams of medication in one teaspoon. One teaspoon. So this is a liquid form of amoxicillin. Basically what's happening, th this drug, uh, the, that's the drug amount, 125 milligrams. That's how much drug amoxicillin is in one teaspoon of this liquid. Okay, let's look at our question. How many teaspoons would the nurse administer per dose? Question one, and then what about per day? So two questions to answer here. But let's go back. Let's, I mean, again, I'm going to repeat myself over and over and over. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find how many teaspoons. So I want to start off my first fraction of dimensional analysis with something dealing with teaspoons. Well, lucky for us, this was given to us in teaspoons. And I actually want to write this up top and this at the bottom. Again, because we're trying to find teaspoons, I'm going to start off my very first fraction with teaspoons at the top. And one teaspoon of this liquid contains 125 milligrams of amoxicillin. So just like with the tablets, again, this is the beauty of dimensional analysis. It's the same technique over and over and over. Let's get rid of the word milligrams because all we want is teaspoons. Well, do we have milligrams getting mentioned anywhere in this problem? Unfortunately, no, we have grams. So what are we gonna do? We're going to use a conversion to connect them. So think of a conversion as a connector. It connects different types of measurements together. So a conversion, one gram is always going to be equal to 1,000 milligrams. Now, earlier, in the previous problem, let's just kind of backtrack, you know, one milligram was a thousand micrograms. Well, one gram is a thousand milligrams. These are two things you're going to quickly learn if you don't know these already. So which one do I want to put at the top? 
well, we're trying to get rid of milligrams. So I'm going to put this 1,000, 1,000 milligrams at the top, and I'm going to put my one gram at the bottom. I'm using that conversion. Why did I do this? One reason, I wanted to get rid of milligrams. And the second reason, I wanted to bring in a word that I could connect into my problem. That's why I use this conversion. So now we need to get rid of word the word gram. We have right here, the patient's going to get 0.75 grams, and this is per dose. Now, true, the patient's going to get it four times per day, but for this first question, it just says, how many teaspoons would the nurse administer per dose? I don't care about the four times per day yet. So, canceling out grams, what do we have left? We have teaspoons, and we have dose. That's what we want. So let's use our fast multiplying technique. Multiply all of your top numbers, divide by all of your bottom numbers, and again, we can always skip the ones. So taking 1,000 times the 0.75, I don't really care that that gives me 750, immediately divide by your bottom numbers. And the only one we have to worry about here is 125, and we get an answer of six. So therefore, this is going to be six teaspoons per dose. This was the answer to our first question. Now, what about per day? This is where we're going to come back in here and use this. Some of this is probably uh, new lingo for you. So QID, four times per day. Uh, now, another way you could see this, um, QID, let's talk about that. It's a perfect time for us to talk about this. QID, since that means four times per day, that's the same thing as saying Q6H every six hours. Remember earlier we had that one right here, Q8H? Well, this one, if we saw Q6H, that's an ugly Q, that's the same thing as saying four. Q stands for quad, by the way. That's how I remember it at least. When I see QID, Q quad. You might see a TID. That would mean three times per day. You might see a BID, literally bid. That would mean two times per day. Think bicycle, two. Um, T, tricycle, three. Q quad, four. All right, so let's answer this question now. If the patient, uh, how many teaspoons is the patient going to get per day? Well, we can just take this answer right here, six teaspoons. The patient's going to get it four times per day. So therefore, the patient would get a total of 24 teaspoons in a whole day. That will be our answer to our second question. And I'm, uh, I'm seeing the comments. You know, some people are saying like, uh, so one school I'm seeing here, 18 out of 20, you can get 18 correct. Or you have to get at least 18 out of 20 right. Again, very strict from what I heard for the most part. Passed it by one question. So, yeah, I mean, it, very strict guidelines from what I'm seeing, too. So, uh, I'm glad. That, and those of y'all who are prepping, who who have already taken med dosage, well, thanks for attending this tonight as well. Hopefully, we can I can show you a few things to improve your uh, med dosage skills. So, let's jump into number four now. Using the information from question three, how many milliliters would the nurse administer per dose? So, what are we trying to find? We got the same information, and it says, how many milliliters would the nurse administer per dose? What are we trying to find? We're trying to find milliliters. And unfortunately, we don't have milliliters in our problem. If you are missing something, weren't we missing something earlier with the milligrams and we did a little conversion, a connector? We used it earlier because we were missing something. Well, watch what I'm going to do. I'm trying to find milliliters, and I'm going to stick to my technique, tried and true. I'm always, whatever I'm trying to find, I'm going to start off my problem with that word. Well, do y'all know how many milliliters are in a teaspoon? This is a conversion you want to know. Five milliliters is one teaspoon. So again, a conversion, five milliliters equals one teaspoon. Now, why in the world did I do this? We're trying to find milliliters. So I'm going to start off my problem with milliliters at the top. Now, why did I use five milliliters and one teaspoon? Well, they are equal. And I'm using teaspoons because now I can actually just go back to this answer right here. Teaspoons per dose. 
Well, we're just trying to find milliliters per dose. Some of y'all may know to just multiply this six by five, but if you didn't, a lot of people get confused of when to multiply versus when to divide. So watch, I'm gonna take this answer I got earlier, I'm gonna put six teaspoons over one dose. What can we do? Cancel out our teaspoons and look at the words that we have left. By you doing dimensional analysis, if you master it, you never have to worry about when to multiply versus when to divide. And I know some of y'all in here have trouble with that. I, I, I've talked to so many students, they're like, man, do I multiply here? Do I divide here? Dimensional analysis takes care of it. So really all we had to do here was just multiply by six. We take the five mLs times the six. So therefore we're going to get 30 milliliters because the teaspoons canceled out and that's going to be per dose. So that is our answer to number four. All right, so let's uh, push forward. We're gonna jump into some uh, flow rates, drip rates. Um, you, you may hear, hear referred to as um, infusion. There's various ways of wording this and some schools have different rounding rules. Um, I think there is a problem or two in here where we have to talk about rounding. I'm not gonna tell you the rounding rules because every school is different. Some people say round to the nearest 10th and then depending on how old the child is, um, it's a, it's a little bit different from school to school. Nonetheless, let's look at number five. Sometimes everything is laid out for us on a silver platter. This problem right here. Determine the flow rate in milliliters per hour. What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the flow rate in milliliters per hour. Well, hello, we got milliliters already given to us and we have the hours already given to us. Lovely. We gotta love these questions because all we do is literally take the milliliters and divide by hours. That's what milliliters per hour means, you divide. So therefore, I'm gonna take my 1,000 milliliters, since that's my top piece, per, that means divide, you can create a fraction, and it's eight hours. And if we divide this, 1,000 divided by eight, let's make sure we understand what this number means too. So we get 125. Well, what does this mean, 125 milliliters per hour? Here's what this means. This is the flow rate. If a patient is going to get 1,000 milliliters NS, that's a normal saline, it's like a solution, a common solution. But if a patient's going to get 1,000 milliliters of this solution, and it's going to take eight hours for the patient to get these 1,000 milliliters, the flow rate will be 125 milliliters every single hour. 125, 125, 125, 125. If you did that every hour for eight hours, that's where the 1,000, the total amount, would be administered. But that's all it is for our problem right there. Everything's laid out on a silver platter, nothing to cancel out. We needed milliliters per hour, and that's exactly what we had given to us. So we just divide. Now the next one is going to take some dimensional analysis though. So we're trying to find a drip rate. GTT, or sometimes you will see GTTS. Um, that stands for drops. So GTT is drops. And drops can be like a drop of a liquid or a drop of medication or a drop of liquid with medication in it. Not every single drop, depending on the machine, is the same. So you're going to have to have some type of drop factor. Um, but basically what this drop factor is saying is 15 drops from this particular IV machine or, or whatever it may be, 15 drops is going to be equal to one milliliter. That's what this is saying. And that number can fluctuate. Sometimes it may be 10 GTTs, it may be 20, it may be 25. Um, it just depends on the machine. And y'all seen these little drops, I'm sure, um, especially those of you LPNs, um, you've visited family in the hospital, maybe you've been in the hospital, little drop machine over there. So, what are we trying to find? Determine the drip rate in GTTs per minute. So GTTs is my first word I want to focus on. We'll worry about minutes right here in a minute. GTTs, just like with all of my dimensional analysis problems, I'm going to start off my first fraction with GTT at the top. So if we hunt around our problem, we're trying to find GTTs, what do we know about that? Well, it tells us in the problem, 15 GTTs is one milliliter. So I'm gonna start off my fraction with the 15 GTTs up top. 
one milliliter. Now, I said we're going to talk about this in a minute. Well, let's go ahead and start talking about that now. We need to get rid of milliliters. What else do we know about milliliters in this problem? Milliliters, a thousand milliliters, eight hours. So I'm going to put my 1,000 milliliters and I'm going to put my eight hours at the bottom. Why did I put it in this order? Cancel out your milliliters. And let's put the brakes on right here. Suppose you stopped right here. If you stopped right here, your answer would be GTTs per hour. We don't want GTTs per hour. We want GTTs per minute. So don't forget about that. And very often, when you're dealing with milliliters, it'll be milliliters per hour. And for drops, it's typically drops per minute, most commonly. So um, we need to get rid of hours. And if we don't have something up here to help us get rid of hours, we use a conversion. And this conversion, hopefully we do know this one. If not, you will learn it. But one hour is 60 minutes. Which one do we put up top? If we want to get rid of the hours, we put the one hour up top and we're going to put the 60 minutes at the bottom. Why did I do this? Two reasons. One, I needed to get rid of hours and look at what it brought into my problem now. Look at the word we have at the top, GTTs. Look at the only word we have at the bottom, minutes. That is GTT per minute. I hope that makes sense there. So a little extra piece in here, talking about time. And now this is where the multiplying and dividing shortcut really shines in my opinion. Notice we have two numbers down here at the bottom that we're gonna have to divide by. This is the first time tonight I think that we've had this. Well, you can divide by each one individually. Watch, I'm gonna take my top numbers, multiply them, 15 times 1,000. And I don't care that that gives me 15,000. Don't matter. Don't write it down. No need to waste your time unless you really want to. Divide. Go ahead and start dividing. Divide by what? I'm going to divide by 8. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to press divide again, and I'm going to divide by 60. This will always work. Now, we do get a decimal here. And when you're dealing with drops, there's no such thing as a partial drop. You can't do 31.25 drops. It's either 31 drops or 32 drops, period. So what we want to say here is just round to the nearest whole number. Had this been 31.6 or 31.7 or 31.5, you would go ahead and bump that up to 32. I don't think anybody's ever said just to automatically round down. But here, 31.25, there's no such thing as a partial drop. So we're going to say 31 GTTs. That's our top word and then the minutes. That's how we know when our dimensional analysis is done, when we've got the right words. And in this case, we had to have a word at the top and a word at the bottom. All right, we got three more problems. Um, very classic here, heparin. Uh, heparin is one of those medications where it's, it's dealt in units. It's, it's not uh, milligrams or anything like that. And we want to determine the flow rate in milliliters per hour. So this is what our goal is. We want milliliters up top and we want hours at the bottom. All right, so let's see. Since we want to start off with milliliters, what do we know about milliliters in our problem? This first thing, the order, blah, 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 blah. Not a daggone thing mentioned about milliliters in that, uh, that order. However, what the pharmacy has on hand, heparin, 25,000 units in 200 milliliters of this solution. So since I'm trying to find milliliters, I'm gonna put my milliliters up top. And what do we know about these 200 milliliters? It contains 25,000 units of heparin. So 25,000 units, and I'm just gonna put a U here. All right, so we're trying to get milliliters per hour. Our milliliters are good because we already have milliliters at the top. That's how I like to start off my dimensional analysis problems. Need to get rid of these units. What else do we know about units in the problem? 1,200 units. I'm going to put that at the top and look at what it says. The patient's getting 1,200 units or the order is for 1,200 units per hour through an IV, per hour. So I can go ahead and say that's 1,200 units per one hour. What can we get rid of? We can get rid of our units. And now we have milliliters at the top. We have hours at the bottom. That's exactly what we want. Milliliters per hour. Our dimensional analysis is done. So multiply and divide. 200 
times 1,200. And go ahead and start dividing by the 25,000. And we get 9.6. Now, for milliliters, uh, heparin, more than likely. Again, I'm not telling you what rounding rules you should know because there's some that are slightly different from school to school. But typically with milliliters, um, especially for adults, you can round to the nearest tenth. And that's already given to us to the tenth, the first decimal place. But this is 9.6 what? What word do we have up top? Milliliters. What word do we have at the bottom? Hour. Milliliters per hour. Um, and, and, you know, back here, talking about this, I see some of y'all making some comments. That This is a prime example of where this will be uh, dimensional analysis takes care of putting that number in the right spot. I mentioned earlier, some of us probably get a little bit confused of when do we div uh, when do we multiply versus when do we divide. Dimensional analysis does that for you. It puts the numbers in the right spot. All right, so we got two more left. These are the tough ones, okay? Um, when I say tough, it's just going to be more than just two or three fractions most of the time when you're dealing with what's called weight base medications. So um, number eight, a child that weighs 20 kilograms has been prescribed a drug at five milligrams per kilogram per dose. That's not a typo there. <laughs> Every eight hours. So what's available? This drug is available at 80 milligrams of this drug for every two milliliters of fluid, of liquid. The question says, how many milliliters would the nurse administer per dose? And then it says per day. So let's not worry about the per day. So this is called weight-based. Depending on how heavy a child or an adult is, they may need more of a certain drug. I mean, we, we, we do this with our children all the time. Um, Tylenol, for example. I mean, that's coming up right here in a minute. But on the back of it, it tells you, you know, based either based on age or weight. Typically on the back of Tylenol, I think it's like, you know, six and three to six is a certain amount. Six to ten is a certain amount. But in hospitals, it's more of a weight-based drug administration. So let's look at this first one, though. So what's the question? What are we trying to find? How many milliliters? Again, I'm going to stick to my same technique. There are other ways of doing it, but let's just stick with it. So we're trying to find milliliters per dose. What do we know about milliliters in our problem? The only thing I see mentioned about milliliters in this problem is this part right here. So let's put the milliliters up top, two milliliters, and I'm going to put that over 80 milligrams. So technically, yes, I am flipping that fraction, but that's only because I need to find milliliters. So milligrams, we got to get rid of that. How do we get rid of milligrams? Well, do, I don't see milligrams here. That's the patient's weight. <laughs> we don't want to tie that in just yet. But right here we have the patient. This child is going to get five milligrams of medication for every kilogram that he or she weighs per dose. So watch how I'm going to write this down. Now you might say, how in the world do we handle this double slash? Good news. If you have a double slash, that's what I call it, double slash, boom, boom. I'm going to put the milligrams up top, five milligrams. And then all I'm going to do is put these other two words at the bottom beside each other. So kilogram and dose. It is two separate words, but just bear in mind, I'm putting them both down here. You can do that. Trust me. You might say, why can I do it? Folks, it's really... The, the idea behind it is you're dividing fractions. And if you remember, keep, change, flip, all that junk, that's really what's going on. But always, double slash, you can put your two last words at the bottom together. But it, remember, it is two separate words. So what can we cancel out here? Milligrams. Now, what do we want our final answer to be? We want milliliters, and it's per dose. And notice we do have milliliters and we have the dose that we're looking for milliliters per dose but we got this extra word kilogram at the bottom well how do we get rid of that this is where we can tie our patient's weight in and the patient's weight was given to us in kilograms so i'm gonna put 20 kilograms and this is one you can put this over one what this is a patient one child so to speak Again, that one's just there for more of a decoration purpose. That way we have all fractions. So what can we cancel out? We can cancel out the kilograms. And what words do we have left? Milliliters. 
per dose. We are ready to rock and roll because we got rid of all of our other words. So from here, let's multiply our top ones. 2 times 5 times 20. And then let's go ahead and divide that by 80. And we get 2.5. And for this child, this will be fine. 2.5 milliliters. And this will be per dose. All right, so let's answer this question here before we jump into number nine. And this one's going to say per day. So this is where we're going to tie back in Q8H. That's every eight hours. And if you do 8, 16, 24, that means the patient's going to get it three times per day. So if we take 2.5 three times a day, that's going to be 7.5 milliliters per day. Now, something that I haven't talked about tonight, I mentioned it earlier, is, you know, really when you're doing medications based on weight, something that you're going to have to do is look at what's called safe dosage. Is that dosage safe for the child? And I mentioned tonight, I said, we're not going to do six and seven. Topic six and seven, that can be an entirely different live session, maybe live session number two, and I'll get some more feedback from you all, depending on, um, you know, how beneficial you felt this was. So, uh, where did we get the three from? So since it did ask per day, per day, every eight hours, eight plus eight plus eight. If you take eight plus eight plus eight, you get 24 hours. If you're given a medication to a patient every eight hours, you are doing it three times per day day. Every eight hours always means three times a day. All right. So number nine, last one for the night. It's very similar, except, you know, it's not the same drug. We have a child. Ooh, the child's weight is in pounds. That's the kicker. Um, and I think, you know, pretty much everything else is going to be very similar. So how many milliliters of Tylenol? So what are we trying to find? Milliliters. So what do we know about milliliters? Nothing up here, nothing about milliliters over here. Boom, we know five milliliters of this liquid will contain 160 milligrams of this Tylenol medication. All right, so what word do we want to get rid of? We want milliliters in our answer. However, we want to get rid of milligrams. Well, very similar to earlier. I'm going to keep my same colors going on. So 10 milligrams, put that up top. And then put the kilograms and the dose at the bottom. Remember, double slash. Put your second two words at the bottom. You'll be good to go every time, I promise. So let's cancel out milligrams. And we're trying to figure out milliliters. And even though it doesn't say per dose, that's an assumption that some of you are probably going to have to make. Um, if, it does, if it does not say per dose, that's the assumption you want to make. So we got milliliters. We got dose, but we got this kilogram that we got to get rid of. Do we have kilograms given to us? No. And I know some of you are probably just going to go off to the side and go ahead and convert that to kilograms. Well, I tell you what, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I like to do is I like to do it directly in my dimensional analysis, just like I did all my conversions tonight, y'all. So yeah, I can't put the 20 pounds in here yet. But watch, I'm going to do my conversion directly in my problem. And this is another conversion that you do want to know. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So with that in mind, which one of these do we want to put at the top? I want to get rid of kilogram and I want to tie in my pounds. LBS, by the way, is the same thing as pounds, LB or LBS. But since I want to get rid of kilograms, I'm going to use this conversion. One kilogram up top. 2.2 pounds at the bottom. This allows us to cancel out kilograms. You might say, good gosh, now we got pounds to worry about. Well, guess what? We can now tie in our patient's weight. So 20 pounds, put that over one. That really stands for one patient. Finally, this extra fraction in here, the, why did I have to do that? So that I could connect. I had to connect. So I'm going to cancel out pounds pounds and therefore we are good to go because we have milliliters per dose the multiplying technique very fast here 
5 times 10 times 20, divide by 160, divide by 2.2, and we're good to go. So 5 times 10 times 20, divide 160, and divide 2.2. Again, letting my dimensional analysis put all my numbers in the right spot. And uh, here for this child, it depends. I'm... Again, rounding rules, I'm just going to stick with to the nearest tenth. But some of y'all, for children, especially small children, you might have to actually end up rounding to two decimal places. Um, so 2.8 milliliters per dose, or there is a chance um, that you might, or 2.84 milliliters per dose. But yeah, I'm good to go, folks. I'll hang out for a few more seconds if you got any questions. But thank you all for attending, and I will talk to you all over in the group.